This text in Galatians, we're reading about a promise that is given to those who believe. Let's keep going through the promises of God. Let's by all means remember whom the promises are for. The promises, aren't, these are the ones we're going through. They're not just made to everybody. They're specific type of people the promise is made to. And it's, God has not left us ignorant of who those people are. I'm going to read this main text again, Galatians 3.22. It says, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Yes. Amen. Now, in the beginning here, I want to take a moment and establish two things, what is believed and what it means to believe. It says, then that believe. Yeah. Believe in what? Let us by all means see what it is that needs to be believed in order for the promise to be given to you. Mm-hmm. A while ago, there was, an, there was a word I, that we we'd shared with each other. I gave one myself. Like, what does this mean to believe exactly? I want to put a very heavy emphasis on this in this message. What does that mean to believe? And what is it that has to be believed? The scriptures are not vague at all concerning this topic. It is crystal clear. It tells you exactly what you need to believe. And it tells you what it means to believe. It gives you examples of people who believe. It shows what manner of people these were. So, yeah, there's no reason for people to not know what it means. So with these things being said, that the promise is given to them that believe, I find it necessary to establish who those people are. Now, to get to the point, Christ is believed. Christ is one of the main things that must be believed. You can't separate Christ from the promises. Spo- especially spoken of in this text right here. The fa- by faith that it says right there, by faith of Jesus Christ, in the verse. It categorically says that. Therefore, he is to be the emphasis of what is believed. Jesus has stated many times in Scripture, you must believe in him to have acceptance with God. Here's an example in John 11, 25 through 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? This is a promise that's been given, and believing is required to receive that promise. Yet it does not leave you with just believing itself. Jesus said, believe in me. In me you believe, and then you will never die. Not any other source. Him. It's the fact that only in faith in Christ Jesus is the reason you're not condemned. John 3, 18 and 19 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, condemned right now. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, and this is the condemnation. This is why they're condemned. (laughs) That the light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. So what have we seen already? If you want to receive the promise, then you have to believe in Jesus. You have to believe in Christ. There's no other way to receive them by than this means and this means alone. Any other attempt to obtain the promises is futile, vain, and pointless. So let's not do as foolish men do and go to other sources to obtain the promises of God, to obtain eternal life, obtain favor with God. Go to Jesus. Amen. Now, might I add, when we say believe in Jesus, I'm not speaking of an intellectual knowledge of Jesus, as people would speak of today. Such an understanding is not enough for men to be saved. Today you hear, like, okay, in some readings I've done recently, I'll hear people talk about the biblical Jesus and the historical Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, (laughs) that just makes me sick to my stomach to hear people talk about two different Jesuses. The one we know is real, but this one, we're not sure about this one. Some may tell you, well, they'll say it this way, I believe Jesus existed, but I don't believe he was the son of God, and it makes me... Sick to my stomach again, the fact that people think of that somewhat commendable. To admit that Jesus existed in the earth, there was a man named Jesus that existed. That's not enough. Pilate, Herod, Judas, and all the scribes and Pharisees could tell you Jesus existed. They're eyewitnesses. They're right there. Jesus said, yeah, I was was one of the the disciples. Pilate said, yeah, he was brought before me. I had him scourged. That didn't... These men weren't saved. These men were not noted for godliness. There's a number of secular historians and writers that would tell you Jesus existed. Among some of them would be Thallus, a man who wrote about the strange circumstances that surrounded Jesus' death. He said, well, that's just an eclipse. It's just uh, just a happenstance phenomenon. He didn't deny it. Then you got like Marisaphian, Cornelius, Tacticus, Will Durant. These are secular writers, heathens. They don't believe in Jesus, but they'll tell you he existed, but they're not saved because of it. I want to be careful when I say this next thing. Just having an intellectual knowledge of what Jesus said and did isn't enough either. Amen. Yeah. 
any pagan, total pagan can recite Jesus, something Jesus said and tell you, well, he was, yeah, he was a good person. He, he was a good moral teacher, someone who like, taught us some good life lessons, gave us some good examples of how to be a good person, have a good family, make good friends. Anyone could do that. To recite what Jesus says is one thing, but to believe what he said is quite the other. That's right. And anything less than believing what Jesus said is not enough. Amen. It means nothing. John 5, 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, believeth, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. There's yet another thing I want to emphasize here. Belief in Jesus, not belief in a Jesus. Uh-huh. How many times have we heard people come before us saying that they believe Jesus is the Son of God, but their lives and the things that they say that their beliefs are in total contradiction with what the Word of God says? There are even other religions that have a Jesus in their message. Mm-hmm. Mormon will come to your doorstep and say, oh, yes, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah, we believe in Jesus, too. Or Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, we believe we have a Jesus, too. Or even a Muslim will come up and say, oh, Jesus was one of the many thousands of the holy prophets of Allah. Well, that's, none of those line up with what is in the Word of God. Amen. No one's saved by that Jesus that they proclaim. Amen. There's even a Jesus in the assembly. Mm-hmm. People come to the assembly and they'll preach a Jesus that isn't even mentioned in the Scriptures. Another Jesus, the Scripture says. And there's a word on this. 2 Corinthians 11, 3 through 4, it says, But I fear, lest by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve, through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For, he that, for if he that cometh preacheth, Another Jesus, there it is, another Jesus. That Jesus cannot save you. That Jesus doesn't speak the truth. That Jesus is not the Son of God. That Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye received another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Mm-hmm. Such people do not believe in Jesus. They believe in a Jesus, another Jesus, a fake Jesus, mm-hmm. yeah. a Jesus that is a figment of their imagination. There's one true Christ, and it's the one that God's spoken of in his word. The one who died for your sins, raised from the dead, and the one to whom image we're being conformed to. First John 5.10 says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath witnessed in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Because he believed not the record, the record that God gave of his Son. So whatever is said, whatever is believed, whatever people say about Jesus, it has to be in perfect harmony with what God has said in his word. It can't be contradictory. Otherwise, it's not the real Jesus, the one being professed. They're not telling the truth when they say they love Jesus and they serve Jesus. If they're preaching something that's contradictory, something that doesn't even, not even close to what God said. Mm -hmm. So let's be clear. It's this Jesus you must believe in in order to be saved and receive the promise. Let's take, let's look at what it means to believe when we speak of these things. This is something that's been watered down significantly in our day, especially Living in a time where people say, you can't even know. You can have an opinion, you can have a persuasion, but you can't know. Well, this isn't true. Not when it comes to the good things of God, it's not. Believing does not mean assuming or thinking. Jesus never said, whoever thinks I'm the son of God will have everlasting life, did he? Did he say, even if you have just a little gut feeling that I might be the son of God, that's enough? No. Sorry, this is not the case when it comes to believers. No real believer has doubted that Jesus Christ is the son of God. There's nothing in Scripture that condones or justifies unbelief of any kind. Let's by all means see what the Scriptures say about doubt and unbelief. Hebrews 3.12 says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. James 1.5-6 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Nothing For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. And what do you think about that? First, it's up here, then it's down here, then it's over there, and it's over there, up and down, all over the place. It's not grounded in one spot. That's That's what a man who doubts like. Unbelief is associated with evil and wavering with sloppiness and disinterest. Mm. So this is not what it's meant by belief. In this case, belief and doubt are clearly contradictory terms. Believing involves taking hold and having full confidence in Christ. You fully acknowledge him as Lord and Savior. You have complete trust in him. You fully rely on him. You cling to him, follow him, not desiring to go elsewhere. Now, here's this Galatians text once again, Galatians 3.22. Once again, this is the amplified version. But the scriptures picture all mankind as sinners shut up and imprisoned by sin so that the inheritance